Hi guys, this is Shreesh and this is the first episode of our very new series What Did They Do? इस सीरीज में हम लोग उन लोगों के कॉलेज जर्नीज को एक्सप्लोर कर रहे होंगे जिन लोगों ने यार काफी अच्छे जॉब्स काफी अच्छे कंपनीज में क्रैक कर रखे हैं ये वीडियो यार हमने काफी ज्यादा रॉ रखने की कोशिश की है जो बेसिकली एक जूनियर और एक सीनियर का कन्वर्सेशन होता है इसको हमने एज इट इज पोर्ट्रे करने की कोशिश की है अगर इससे होता क्या है वीडियो काफी बड़ी बन जाती है तो एक घंटे के आसपास की ये वीडियो हो रही होगी तो यार आपको क्या करना है ट्राई करो कि आप ये पूरा वीडियो देखिए अगर आपके पास पूरा देखने का एक घंटा एट स्ट्रेच टाइम नहीं है तो ट्राई करो टू एक्स पे ये वीडियो देखो टू एक्स पे आपको समझ नहीं आ रहा तो वन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव पे देखो ठीक है अब ये वीडियो क्यों इम्पोर्टेंट है आपके लिए ठीक है आपके पास रोड मैप्स अवेलेबल है इंटरव्यू एक्सपीरियंसिस अवेलेबल है तो यार कोई जरूरत भी है इस चीज की ये क्या ये वर्थ इट है हाँ यार ये वर्थ इट है क्यों है क्या क्या करना है वो तो अवेलेबल है उनका स्टेप वाइज आपके पास डॉक्यूमेंटेशन अवेलेबल है लेकिन यार आपके पास ये नहीं पता कि आपको अगर आप एक कॉलेज स्टूडेंट हो तो आपको किस टाइम पे क्या चीजें करनी है ठीक है अगर आप एक कॉलेज स्टूडेंट का एग्जांपल ले लो तो आपके पास काफी सारी चीजें होती है करिकुलर एक्टिविटीज होती है करिकुलर एक्टिविटीज इंक्लूड आपके प्रैक्टिकल सबमिशन ठीक है फिर आपका एग्जामिनेशन होते हैं ठीक है तो इसके साथ साथ यार आपके होते हैं एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर एक्टिविटीज जैसे आपके क्लब्स के कुछ काम होता है वो आपके पास होता है फेस्ट यार फेस्ट के काफी सारे काम होते हैं तो बेसिकली आप एक एक पोलिटिकुलर डायरेक्शन में जब आप जाते हो तो आपके साथ आपको इसके साथ आपको काफी सारी चीजें मैनेज करनी पड़ती है तो बेसिकली एक सिंपल रोड मैप से वो काम नहीं होता है तो हम लोग क्या कर रहे होंगे हम लोग उनकी जिन लोगों ने क्रैक कर रखी है अच्छी कंपनी उन लोगों ने अपने अपने टाइम पे कैसे सारी चीजें मैनेज करी और कैसे उनको रेज्यूमे में पोर्ट्रे किया वो चीजें हम देख रहे होंगे दिस इज नॉट अ रोड मैप दिस इज नॉट अ इंटरव्यू एक्सपीरियंस ठीक है कंसिडरिंग कि ये जो वीडियो है वो काफी सारे फर्स्ट ईयर्स देख रहे होंगे एफ वाइज स्टूडेंट्स देख रहे होंगे तो आपके लिए यार मैंने डिस्क्रिप्शन में कोडिंग निंजाज की लिंक रखी है तो बेसिकली कोडिंग निंजाज इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन स्टडी इन अ स्ट्रक्चर्ड मैनर कौन से कौन से टॉपिक्स आप सीख सकते हो और डी आप सीख सकते हो डेटा स्ट्रक्चर एल्गोरिदम्स कोई लैंग्वेज आपको सीखनी है तो वो आप सीख सकते हो सिस्टम uh, डिजाइन आपको सीखना है वो आप सीख सकते हो कोई एक टेक्स टैक्स सीखना है जैसे आपको मोन स्टैक डेवलपमेंट सीखना है वेब डेवलपमेंट का जो पार्ट होता है तो वो आप सीख सकते हो एंड्रॉइड डेवलपमेंट वहाँ पे आप सीख सकते हो काफ़ी सारे कोर्सेस वो ऑफर करते हैं कंपिटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग के लिए अगर आप थोड़ा बहुत देखना चाहते हो तो वो भी आप सीख सकते हो तो बेसिकली दे ऑफर अर्ली बर्ड डिस्काउंट विच इज करंटली गोइंग ऑन ऑन देयर पेज एंड ऑल्सो आई हैव अ रेफरल लिंक फॉर यू गाइज जिससे अगर आप कोई भी कोर्स परचेज कर सकते कोई भी कोर्स परचेज करते हो अगर आप उस रेफरल लिंक से जाते हो तो आपको एक अडिशनल टेन परसेंट ऑफ मिलता है उसी के साथ साथ आपको जो अर्ली बर्ड डिस्काउंट यार टेन फिफ्टीन परसेंट या इवन ट्वेंटी परसेंट समटाइम्स होता है तो वो भी मिल जाता है तो काफ़ी एक हेफ्टी अमाउंट का डिस्काउंट आपको मिल रहा होगा तो बेसिकली आपको बस ये करना है अगर आप एक फर्स्ट ईयर हो इवन अगर आप एक सेकेंड ईयर के स्टूडेंट हो थर्ड ईयर के स्टूडेंट हो अगर आपको कंसाइज वे में अगर आपको स्ट्रक्चर्ड वे में कहीं पे कुछ सिलेबस चाहिए है तो यू कैन डेफिनेटली चेक आउट द लिंक गिवन द डिस्क्रिप्शन इसी के साथ यार लेट्स बिगिन विद दीडियो कंटिन्यू विद इंट्रोडक्शन अनु भैया यू कैन गो फर्स्ट सो भैया कैन फॉलो या सो हाई गाइज आई एम अनुप नायर I am currently an undergraduate student at College of Engineering Pune. I am pursuing my bachelor's in computer science. I have previously interned at Disha India in the summer of 2021, and I'm also currently interning there. Yeah, that's pretty much about it about me. Okay. Yeah. So, hey guys, my name is Soham. I have also previously interned at Disha during the summer, and uh, currently I work part time as a freelancer on various online platforms. um apart from coding i enjoy playing chess and i play a lot of video games and uh, watch movies so we can uh, if if soham bhaiya can quickly explain us the uh, internship procedure how it was the interview everything right so yeah so as i was saying uh, disha initially visited our campus in september 2020 and uh, we first had a short listing of resumes uh, after the ppt and followed by that we were all allowed to sit for the aptitude test based on uh, cgpa parameters basically um so du- during the aptitude test we had uh, i think four sections there was a coding section a technical section um, an aptitude section and uh, finally we had a sort of like a gk uh, section so there were around 16 students shortlisted from perhaps 400 500 
and uh, we moved on to the interviews. So they, there were two interviews for us. Uh, the first one was a technical interview and the second one was mainly technical, but it also included uh, some HR questions. So after the first interview, we had eight students shortlisted. And after the second interview, they selected two of us for the internship. Uh, Anubaya, uh, did you have anything uh, different in the interview procedure? No, the structure mostly remained the same, but like the interview itself was different because it uh, is mostly driven around your a resume and your CS fundamentals. So you get asked questions based on what you know. Uh, the interviewers were fairly, like they were very helpful. Uh, it was more like a conversation where you could uh, explain your ideas and get help and more feedback from their side too. So in all, it was a great interview experience and the structure was exactly like so mentioned. And at the end of the day, both of us were selected. Okay. Uh, so now we'll continue with uh, your journeys. Uh, Let's start with Swambaya. You can go on with the first year. What did you do? What did you miss out on? Uh, you can list down your pros, cons, what you felt that uh, was the best you did and uh, what you feel that you missed doing it and should have done. Right. Um, okay. So for me, the first year was sort of below my expectations um, because I uh, came into college thinking that we would be learning a lot of computer science from the very beginning. But uh, as the first year is common, we had just one computer subject in the first semester. And for the rest of the year, we did not have anything that was remotely related to what we were actually uh, going to study later on. So that was quite disappointing. Um, but I did have a head start about the rest of the class because I had, I was one of the people who had computer science in their 11th and 12th. So I had a fair bit of experience with uh, C++, uh, which also meant that most of the curriculum was already covered for me. Um, and I could have, uh, I could have not studied and attempted all the uh, exams as I had already done the stuff before. So I uh, did not really focus much on anything on the academic side. Um, apart from that, I did uh, focus a lot on extracurricular activities. I was a part of uh, the chess club and the quiz club, and uh, we had a lot of competitions there. And do, in the coding side of it, I did begin with HackerRank, not in a very structured or organized manner, but um, I attempted a few questions here and there from HackerRank for C++. And that's much it. So I did not really focus much on computer science in my first year, I would say. And perhaps I should have, if I had, I would have even gotten a bigger head start in my second year, uh, which is something that I would recommend other first years to start from their first year. You could um, focus on, you know, uh, learning a new language or a framework that can help you in the uh, upcoming years. So now if I summarize that uh, you had a prior experience in C++, so basically, if you want to suggest someone, if they don't have any experience in coding, so basically they have to learn a language in their very first year, correct? Yes. And uh, after learning a language, they can go for DSA either in the same year or in the consecutive year. Correct. Yeah. I mean, when you learn the language, you would learn a fair bit of DSA as well. And that would definitely help you in the second year. And I would also recommend learning some sort of framework that can allow you to build, uh, you know, web applications or, um, you know, whatever you're interested in. Okay. In the very first year. Yes. Uh, it can go side by side. Once you have a fair bit of knowledge uh, about the language, you can move on to learning some framework associated with that language. At least the basics should be clear in the first year. So that can build a strong foundation for the second year. Onward. Okay. And can you name some popular frameworks? Like which one should right. follow? So, so if you want to go into the web development side, I would say uh, the Mon stack is what you should be learning because that is probably the most popular uh, stack tech stack currently. Uh, whereas if you want to go in the backend, you can uh, have either of JavaScript, Python, or Java. Uh, C++ also is used in companies, but I don't see a lot of usage, usage of C++ unless uh, you are you know, in a particular domain uh, in which C++ is used. Um, so yeah. If you're, it completely depends on what you want to go for. Okay. And uh, I see there are a lot Python many, is better, but so. Yeah. So I see there are a lot many things which uh, you should do in your very first year. 
so can you prioritize them uh, first is your language second is your ds which i think uh, like saal khatam ho jayega year will end but ye cheeze khatam nahi hongi kyunki problem solving ke sath sath your dsa gets better and better so uh, how much should you focus on your dsa part how much should you focus on your dev part in the first year with respect to first year well i would say perhaps for the first half of the year you could focus on learning the language and learning mm-hmm. a fair amount of basic data structures and algorithms and probably in the second half you can begin with learning a framework perhaps you know you can experiment uh, with a couple of languages if you want to uh, but i would say that should be enough for the first year i mean you i don't think people need to get uh, too stressed out in their first year i mean it i believe it's a good time to also focus on extracurriculars like fests and you know clubs so a balance between both of them would probably probably be what you're looking for great and uh, we'll go with anup bhai aapne kya kya kiya first year so my experience was a bit different um i always had a knack for doing things on the computer so you know like installing some games or things like that but i'd never actually coded anything the best experience i had with respect to coding when i came in first year was html because uh, i was initially not into computer science so that made me like explore things other than my own domain uh, so i used to participate in a lot of fest i used to work through my curriculum stuff but uh, one thing that was interesting to me in the first year was machine learning i was uh, like part of a club in the first year which uh, did a lot of machine learning stuff so in the process of uh, understanding machine learning i picked up python like this was in addition to learning c in the first year like i had it in the second semester so throughout my first semester i had no coding experience i had no idea how to open a terminal all of those things happened but then uh, the second semester was more uh, enriching in terms of computer science knowledge for me because that's where i picked up how to program in c how to program in python uh, learning about your basic data structures and then uh, like getting to apply that in some form of some form of the other in the machine learning domain uh, so that's mostly how my first year ended i did not have any idea about development about competitive programming all of those things were like i explored them in my third semester so basically at the end of first year all i had was two languages c and python along with some experience in machine learning that was pretty much it what i think i could have done better is explored competitive programming because Uh, that's like the best way you can learn a language instead of directly do- delving into one of the domains so mm-hmm. i think anybody who starts off their first year should uh, probably get introduced to problem solving and you know solve more type of problems that involve algorithms and data structure that will also strengthen your competitive programming profile that's one thing i would like to have done uh, coming to the development aspect like i was raw even in the third semester like it was in the fourth semester that i actually got some hands on experience but i believe first year is a good time to try out development but if i were to prioritize i would say uh, you should definitely start with a language then get introduced to problem solving data structures and algorithms and then you can dive into one of your favorite domains be it web dev or ml or desktop applications anything that's how i think i would have done it now and also in addition to your explanation i would like to add one question that uh, do you recommend uh, going for machine learning in the very first year of your engineering journey as in uh, for those who do not have interest and are recommended by some for them i think uh, my dive was not a very good one because um, i had the understanding of the math but not the understanding of how it worked with computers so initially it was interesting i used to get things done but it started getting stale after some time and my interest went more towards the development side but i would recommend if you actually have interest and if you can find a good peer group then it's definitely one of the most interesting domains that you can work through but it depends on how you structure your way into it mine was not very good but if you can find a good flow to your uh, machine learning journey then definitely yes 
So we'll summarize. Uh, what did you do is uh, C language and Python along with some machine learning and data structures in C, right? Yep. Great. Again, uh, do you recommend doing data structures in C or uh, starting with C if it is not in your curriculum? Uh, as you said, C was in your curriculum. So like, do you yep. recommend C++ or Java for uh, data structures to the beginners or it's, it's okay if you start with C? So what I've seen right now is that the curriculum has been revised to start off with Python, but then mm -hmm. when you enter your second year, it's data structures, but in C. So my heavy recommendation is that you start off with a language like C because it helps a lot in logic building. But again, like uh, your, uh, as you go into the development stage, then you would need other languages that are higher in level than C. So picking up something like how I learned Python was I tried to draw parallels to C. So every time I would write something in Python, I would like try to uh, figure out the same code in C. So that helped me to draw a mapping between both the languages. So I would suggest uh, to start, not start, you could start with Python, but explore C at least because it helps a lot in logic building. Okay, great. So now this was the complete first year. What actually happens in the first year is that we have a lot many things on our plate, like not really very specified to our domain or to our branch. First year, we have a second year or third year for semester wise. Dekh rahe so first semester and second semester of our second year. Hai, so Sombeya, can you tell us uh, first semester, mein, second year? Ke, aapne kya kya kar? So <clears throat> I would say that the most important course throughout the entire computer science degree is data structures and algorithms. And that was in our third semester. So we started off with that and uh, we were coding in C. So uh, it was quite low level stuff. And we also had to complete a major project. So the DSA project ends up being one of the big projects that you do throughout your degree. So it probably has a good chance of being on your resume if you do it uh, well enough. And it has a good chance of also getting you the actual job. So my DSA project was a chess engine, which actually ended up being a major point of discussion during my DSA interview as well. So I would say that uh, uh, picking a good DSA project is essential. And uh, you also need to focus a lot on the subject uh, because there are a lot of fundamentals that are taught to you and uh, they're probably going to stay with you for the rest of your career. So that's how it started off with me. We had our DSA and uh, I was quite into my project. I spent a lot of hours working on it. And uh, essentially the entire semester, I was I did not really do anything apart from that. I did explore. So as a part of the project, we also learned technologies like Git, uh, which is quite important. So uh, I this was the time when I first learned the importance of uh, Git. You know, uh, I had my first GitHub repo and uh, I understood why Git is so important and why, you know, you can manage projects very well using Git. Um, and the second thing that I learned that was quite important was, uh, you know, your setup. So I didn't really have a setup until now. I used to actually code on, you know, gedit uh, or, you know, Vim or something like that. But I did not really focus much on having my own setup, my own uh editor with all the required modules installed with, you know, um, um, auto linting and stuff like that. So, uh, this semester is when I was introduced to that as well. And, uh, that has stuck on to me for a lot of, uh, like the past couple of years. So yeah, uh, these were the things that I did in my third semester. Great. So basically you started structuring things on your own. Yes. Great. And, uh, was it the perfect time you did things? Yeah, I would say I was quite happy with my third semester because I ended up learning quite a lot from my project. So uh, it was the first big project that I worked on. And I would say that I I don't think I would do it differently. But in the news curriculum, I think BSA is split into two semesters. So if that is the case, then you, know, you end up having some more time to do other things on the site. You have, uh, so you can continue, you know, with whatever framework you've picked, or you can continue experimenting with other domains that you have not discovered in your first year. And of course, like the technologies I mentioned earlier, it's very important to learn those uh, if you haven't had them uh, set up for you by now. So that is what I would recommend. But if you have DSA just for one semester, then I would say it's completely okay to just focus on that for the entire semester uh, because it's quite important and all the uh, things that you learn through the course of the project will uh, guide you in the later semesters. Great. So the key takeaways I feel from here is that 
in your third semester you have many of your core subjects going on so basically focused on your curricular activities uh, more than some club activities fests everything and uh, second thing is that structure your things uh, be very very uh, conscious what you are doing uh, uh, along with your academics ab ye to ho gaya ki cs wale bachche ye kar rahe now someone like a student for a mechanical or uh, metallurgy to wo kaise kar sakta in short non cs students ke liye koi core fundamental subjects nahi sikhaye jate third semester mein computer science ke Uh, according to the new curriculum we have dsa in our uh, uh, curriculum uh, as in our course but it is only till trees advanced data structures we do not have it. so how can he proceed i mean if the basic data structures are part of the curriculum then of course you can learn those from there um if you haven't had uh, a lot of experience in a programming language probably brush up your skills alongside that and uh, i mean trees graphs are important so you need to learn them through some sort of a co- online course i mean there's lots of courses and tutorials so you can probably follow one of those and learn uh, those uh, data structures and algorithms and probably it would be a good time for a non cs student to also start their first project uh, it could be anything i mean um, uh, something like uh, you know a typical dsa project like sudoku tic tac toe or whatever but any sort of development experience is probably important if you are a non cs student looking to uh, go for cs companies okay now we'll come to anup bhaiya uh, aapne kya kya kiya third semester so third semester for me was more like a wake up call because i knew that i had to do some things differently because everybody else was like quite ahead of me in lot of things so like so i'm said i was focusing a lot on dsa so it was very interesting honestly speaking because uh, just having learned some basics of c and now getting to like apply it into data structures was very interesting so i used to focus a lot on my dsa classes uh, the other thing that so mentioned was the dsa project and yes it is one of the most if not the most important project that you'll present during your internships because uh, it it forms a major point of discussion in your interviews too so for me it was a project where i had to write a linux utility tool so a lot of things you learn from there like uh, how you structure a big project how you um write good code how you use version control systems like git etc so that was a very good experience other than that like i started with hacker rank in my third semester like i used to solve problems occasionally and i used to do most of them in c though i used to occasionally switch to python but mostly i used to solve problems in c i think that helped me build a lot of problem solving skills along the way as i was learning data structures but it was also during this time that uh, a lot of seniors start to uh, like guide you through what you should do like based on their experience how it could help you in your internships that follow the next semester so i i tried to follow most of those advices like the curriculum was an important part of it after that your dsa project and then finally like the competitive programming aspects i didn't do any development for my third semester the only mm-hmm. development i would say was my dsa project and yes i i think i should have started off with some form of development in that semester because there was time uh, mm-hmm. other than that i think everything else was pretty good so again uh, a very important aspect here in third semester is your main project a uh, dsa project which can uh, go in your resume uh apart from this again your fundamental languages uh, fundamental subjects core subjects okay so apart from this anything any of you would like to add anything dev ki humne baat nahi kari abhi anup bhai ne thoda bahut bataya to dev ki bhi thodi si baat kar lete ki uh, inke alawa matlab jo bhi hamare fundamental topics hai uske alawa dev third semester mein necessary hai ya nahi kyunki uh, projects mein dev b is an important part yes um so what i've observed very recently is that a lot of juniors in our college are probably starting off with dev right in their first semesters so that is good like it helps you understand a lot of things about you know let's say a client server architecture how you uh, connect to an api and things like that we didn't know like at least i didn't know all of this till my fourth semester so it's good that you know all of these things uh, but at the same time like 
DSA is the fundamental for all of these things that you build. Uh, yeah. Right now, what I've seen as a trend is that there are a lot of YouTube tutorials or online courses that say you can build application X in Y number of hours. So people are drawn to that. They do that, but they follow the tutorial as it is. So that makes you a project, but you really don't have any understanding about uh, some design decisions that you took. Why did you write code that way? Why not some other way? Things like that. Those are things that can come your way if you understand the purpose of what you're building. Uh, it's good to start off with some basic development projects. Like I've seen people building clones of things like Netflix and Flipkart, things like that. That's good because it will strengthen a lot of your basic concepts, but that's something you can experiment in the first three semesters, I believe. But after that, when you are actually moving into development, then my suggestion would be to build something that is of value. So something that can actually be a problem solving tool. That's something you can try out later. But yeah, for the start, I believe you can experiment with development, like pick up a framework, pick up a language and just follow some tutorials. Okay, so we are done with our third semester. Now, uh, moving on to the fourth semester, we will we'll go with Anubhai only. Uh, fourth semester, mein aapne kaise move on? So one of the major things I wanted to do in fourth semester was to focus on dev. Like I had really no knowledge of dev and like a lot of my friends were doing really good development. So I wanted to sort of uh, experiment with stuff. I thought I would start off with Android, but that did not go well. Uh, and then like one day in college, there was a workshop that was organized by CSI COAP and it was a Monstack workshop. Like it was a perfect time for me to just go in. I had no experience with JavaScript, nothing. I just went in and sat there. It was really interesting. Like it was taken by one of our seniors and it was really awesome. Like that, that kind of kick started my development journey. Uh, apart from that, like as soon as I learned some basics of Mon. I went ahead and made your basic applications like the to-do list, the clones and stuff like that. Uh, it was during this time that the lockdown hit and like we had a lot of time at hands. So that's when like I went into Android application development and like I used my Monstack uh, ideas only and build a COVID tracking app. So that was one of my major projects that I did as part of development. Then this semester also was the time where I started participating in hackathons. So we did an initial hackathon on machine learning. This was before the lockdown. So it was like an air airplane management system using machine learning thing. So we did that. Then I participated in an idea thon where like we had to just come up with an idea. So that was there. And then uh, it was during the lockdown that we participated in our first major hackathon. Uh, there were seniors who like uh, helped us to form a team and stuff like that. And then we went on and made an application that was, uh, you know, a video calling application. So this was one of the projects that I would say that paved my development journey because seniors used to write exceptional code. I got to learn a lot from that. Uh, I learned how version control works when you work with multiple team members and it was a great experience. Uh, the icing on top of the cake was that we won the hackathon and we also took that product ahead. Uh, we went to another hackathon in July and we were able to win that hackathon too, uh, based on the same idea. So these uh, three to four months of the lockdown were crucial for me in terms of development because they also gave me projects that I could put on the resume. And at the same time, a lot of basic concepts were cleared. Uh, the underlying framework that I was using was mostly the Mon stack. So I got fluent in JavaScript. So that became my third language. And additionally, it also like helped me pick up React and Node, things like that. So it was a very fruitful semester that way. So basically, you were uh, very, very uh, inclined towards web development part. Uh, but yeah. you also explored the Android part. Yeah, so basically, uh, the Android development I did was part of the Monstack. So there's this framework called React Native that lets you use the same code and make Android or iOS applications. So I wanted to make an Android app. I just chose the framework to be something that I already know. Great. And 
I guess when you are in your fourth semester, there's this major hackathon, Smart India Hackathon, SIH. Yeah. So, like, yeah. did you participate in it? Yeah, so SIH, I missed out, and it was like one of the major regrets that I did not participate in SIH. Uh, it was mostly because I couldn't form a team that was according to their specification. But uh, I'm also happy that I got to participate in three to four other hackathons, if not SIH. So yeah, that's fine. Can you can you name them? I mean, it would be very, very helpful for the audience. So uh, the hackathon that we did in May was the Bajaj FinSurf Health Hackathon. So it was uh, majorly themed around how you could have more engagement in the COVID time, at the same time focusing on your health so that was uh, that hackathon. Then there was this national level hackathon called uh, RFRF. It's basically an institution that conducted this hackathon. So here we had to come up with a serverless video calling tool, which was in line with what we made for our previous hackathon. So those were the two major hackathons. Like I can't remember the names of the other three, but they were on similar lines. Great. So now we'll go with Somaya. Right. So, um, my fourth semester was uh, interesting because uh, so far I had only used a coding language like C to create my projects, which was quite low level and you can't really use C uh, for, you know, most uh, uh, most applications in today's world. So, I had to go to a modern language. So, I initially looked at Python and JavaScript, but I realized that I, I was completely against uh, web development because I did not like working on the front end. I uh, really hated it. I did not like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, all three of them. So, um, and I was naturally inclined towards Python. I really liked the syntax and I really liked the way that the language was created. And I just liked everything about it. So I started learning Python and this was a semester where I actually learned python as well as i knew my previous languages and actually went even forward with it so the initial three months uh i think we were we had january february and half of march so in that i had a couple of extracurricular activities and i started learning python because we had a course called principles of programming languages which required uh, us to learn something like python so uh, that's when i was exposed to it then the lockdown hit. So of course we had our own issues, uh, but after, uh, you know, we were like probably in April, uh, that's when I started using Python for competitive coding. So this is where I actually had most of my prep for my internships. So first things first, I would say that uh, it's really important to have good seniors who guide you through this particular, very crucial sort of phase in your uh, um, uh, during your degree. So I had uh, some really good seniors who told us exactly what we could expect in the summer, as well as the beginning of the next semester when all the companies were going to come and what the companies were looking for, so on and so forth. So that's what sort of uh, opened my eyes that, okay, I actually have a very crucial time coming in front of me and I should probably prepare very well for that. So that is what pushed me to actually start learning uh, more about Python and uh, actually use it for competitive program. So I focused mainly on that. On the dev front, um, uh, I did learn a lot from my PPL project. Uh, so I, my PPL project was uh, a virtual assistant, uh, which included a lot of things. Uh, it included Python for scripting. And I had a teammate who worked on a machine learning API. So even though I was not very aware of what uh, how this worked, I could see his code and learn from it. So that gave me good exposure. So I would say the second important point is surround yourself by people who are smarter than you. So you learn a lot from them. In this case, I was definitely, uh, you know, learning a lot from my teammate and that helped me definitely uh, in, in the uh, further phases. So once that was done, you know, I had some sort of sense of how APIs work and how web applications work and how uh, they can be deployed. So all this was done by my teammate and I was looking to implement this in some way. So as the lockdown hit, you know, we all were quite bored and we like, you know, we formed an online group of friends. So we were looking to play uh, games with each other. And at the same time, I was also exposed to this uh, website called Pilio. They have an API uh, which you can use uh, to communicate through WhatsApp. So I decided to make a game for me and my friends, uh, which would work through WhatsApp. And it would be basically an implementation of the popular game Mafia. 
So uh, I would say I worked quite a lot on that. And that's most of the dev that I did because all of my other time was spent uh, learning Python and, uh, you know, doing competitive programming on HyperI. So uh, that's all I did. And uh, the game did end up uh, being fun. Uh, like my friend and I played a lot during the lockdown. We probably spent at least 40, 50 hours on it. So um, I did learn a lot of how, you know, client server architecture works, how APIs work and how you can deploy those. I, I believe I used Heroku for the deployment. So that was the first time that I had actually deployed my own API and used it for something. So yeah, that, that was what, um, uh, my journey was so, so far I had my DSA project, I had my PPL project and I had this, um, uh, this game that I worked on. Apart from this, I also tried to begin freelancing at this point of time. So I, uh, I started on this platform called freelancer and I worked on a couple of scraping projects. So, uh, actually CSI COP had organized a workshop on scraping. So I knew some of the fundamentals from there because I had attended that workshop and I was able to actually use them, uh, to, you know, uh, uh, work on projects for clients. And I worked on a couple of scraping projects. So these two projects also ended up on my resume because I did not have anything else apart from them. Uh, and although I would say that they did not really, um, help much, uh, but it was still fun to learn scraping and, uh, to see what, uh, other applications of scraping. So yeah, the, the, that's pretty much all I did until my, uh, internship interviews. So by far we have not talked about the lead code, uh, code safe or code forces. So I'm assuming right. that you did nothing of this sort till now. No. So I did code chef. Uh, uh, I really did not like that UI. So I, I, I just, I'm completely against uh, using code chef. Uh, I was uh, on lead code for a brief period of time because I spent most of my time on hacker and I think I had a couple of weeks on lead code and I quite liked their interface. Uh, code forces. I was not really, I did not really use code forces much. I did have a look at some of their questions, but again, I was not very fond of their UI. I think, uh, hacker rank and lead code are probably, uh, the best platforms according to me, you begin with hacker rank and then you move on to lead code. And that's probably a good, uh, progression for you. Okay. Great. And, uh, you also mentioned that, uh, you used Python for your computer program. So, uh, was yes. it your third language or or as in your second or third language or was it your first language during your interviews? It was my first language. I mean, Python has been my first language since my fourth semester. And mm -hmm. I pretty much use that for everything. I don't really use any other languages, uh, apart from projects that require those languages. Okay. So like why I asked this question was that, uh, many companies do not allow Python to be the first language and they generally ask students to choose one between C++ or Java, which is what I have heard. So is it true or, uh, DSO was a special case which allowed Python. Okay. So, uh, I had also gotten this feedback from my seniors and what I had heard and what is true according to me is that there are very few companies that do this where they don't allow you to use Python and they only let you use C++, Java or C. Uh, most of the companies, I would say they allow you to use all languages and they don't really care about, uh, you know, whether it's Python or C or C++. So yeah. And my backup plan was that, you know, I had a fair bit of knowledge of C++ and C. So I would use one of them if, if I really needed to for that particular company. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't think it's a big issue if you use Python as your main language for competitive coding. Uh, but I would say that C++ does give you an edge because it is much faster. And I, I, I would say that, uh, even though they allow you to run your Python code for longer, uh, in many times, uh, in many situations I've noticed that whatever logic you have implemented in Python, if you convert it to C++, it will pass all the test cases and on Python, it will give you, uh, errors because of the time. So, uh, the often you can see that even though they have revised the limits for Python, it's not, it does not translate in all of the cases. So, yeah. So I would suggest that if you really want to go into competitive coding, you probably choose C++, but if you like Python and uh, like me, uh, then you can definitely go with it for, uh, competitive coding. Uh, it, it's good enough to get you, a, a, an interview for sure. So by the end of second year, you had mostly everything which is required to crack an interview. So apart from a uh, thing resume, uh, which we haven't talked 
about uh, till now. So I would like to discuss it. Uh, you had projects. You were good in skills like DSA languages. Uh, you had I probably assume uh, done some courses to uh, which uh, certify uh, your skills. Uh, so how did you go on building your resume? Anyone, anyone can go. So maybe you can start. Okay, fine. So uh, for the on-campus opportunities, uh, we had to follow a very strict sort of uh, format, which was, you know, uh, on this app called Superset. So we didn't really have to worry much about a resume unless, uh, you know, we didn't have much stuff to add. The only thing you have to focus on is to make the content crisp, concise, and make sure you don't make any grammatical mistakes. But most of the subheadings are already predefined. So you have, you know, your projects, your education, your work experience, mm -hmm. if any, most of us didn't have any. And uh, you have your courses and your extracurricular activities. So you just have to, fill, we just had to fill in these things. And mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, but for the off-campus opportunities that I applied to, I created a resume using some template that I found online, which if I uh, would, uh, you know, uh, view in, in today's time, I would probably laugh at it and just delete it. It was quite funny. Uh, it was a very badly formatted resume. I was, you know, uh, very new to all this. And uh, I probably included a lot of content on stuff that I shouldn't have. And I probably didn't include content that I should have. So it's important that you, you know, uh, look at uh, other people's resumes, probably your seniors or, or uh, you know, people that you are trying to follow. You have a look at the resumes, see how it is structured, see what sections are important and, you know, fill in your content accordingly. Uh, the template also, I would say, is important to a certain extent. Uh, you should not go for a very fancy template, but at the same time, not something very basic as well. Uh, so you can use, I mean, in today's time, I use a website called Canva. I find that to be quite good for resumes. Uh, so probably you can, you know, people who are trying to make the resume can check it out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, great. So basically all COEPNs have a set template for your resume. Yes, yeah. That makes it quite easy for on-campus opportunities. Yeah, so this thing is very similar, very very similar to IITs, I suppose, because I have heard that IITs have their own template uh, when it comes to resumes. So great. So now we'll shift to our third year. So what did you do in the very first semester of your third year? We'll we'll start with Anupay. Cool. So third year is the phase when you get your companies when they start coming and it's like one of the most hectic semesters i would say because you have to manage so many things in our case like uh, there were a lot of uncertainties due to covid whether the companies would come if they would would it be online and things like that so we didn't know this and our semester started off so we got involved in assignments and academics Meanwhile, we were also like serving our CSI COAP club together. So we had to come up with things that would make sure that we help our juniors and keep the club engaged. So there were a lot of things to do. And like uh, one fine day, you just get a message that company X is coming in three days or things like that. And it turns out to be a very tense situation. But uh, during all this time, like uh, I was practicing competitive programming, brushing up my CS fundamentals. Like this is the phase where you actually need to go through in interview experiences. And uh, like we at CSI COAP made sure that we had all our seniors' internship experiences so that we could uh, get an idea about how the whole process works. In addition, there are a lot of online sites like Geeks for Geeks, which let you uh, read through any experiences. So these were the things that we kept on doing before companies started coming. And then like one fine day, the companies just come through and you get involved in their processes. So it's a very uh, daunting experience for some people, but once you get through, like once you get your offer, then it becomes a lot easier. Um, like in our case, like we were fortunate that we got into the second company that came during our time. So we were free of most of the burden. Like we got done by September 3rd of 2020. Mm -hmm. So after that, the semester, like uh, it was usually around the core CS fundamentals. Now we move on to topics like computer networks and, you know, 
things like uh, database management systems. In addition, we also had a hardware course called computer organization. So this semester had lots of subjects. And in, in addition to this, there were lots of projects. Every subject had a project of its own. So it became very difficult to manage the semester because it was also the first semester that our college took online. There were, uh, you know, the structure was different and everybody was getting used to it. So it became quite hectic. Uh, like in my opinion, it was one of the hardest semesters for me personally. Uh, there were, uh, the subjects were really good. Like you could get burdened because of the load, but have, doing computer networks and DB, DBMS is very essential because if you were to go to the placement interviews, you would definitely need them. Not only that, all your work that you would do in a company would revolve around these parts. If not computer networks, DBMS for sure. So these are very important subjects in my opinion and focusing on these two subjects is important. So we had lots of assignments which help to you know, understand some practical aspects along with the theory. So that helps a long way. Um, like most of the projects that I did were part of the curriculum. So there were development projects because DBMS was involved. There were like uh, network tools because CN was involved and things like that. So in all, you get a lot of projects to add to your resume. And if you have some prior dev experience before, it just makes it more simpler. So overall, the semester is a part where you focus on your core computer science fundamentals and try to you know understand how things work in the real life. Okay, And uh, you also said that you did uh, get through the company, which came on campus. So basically, did you prepare something extra uh, apart from the things which you are preparing over the years, uh, specifically for the interview? So yeah, I would say uh, during the entire course of the lockdown, the initial phase that is March to I would say July, uh, preparations were like going on alongside all the dev work that I did. So that involves competitive programming, then brushing up your CS fundamentals, then <laughs> reading up through all the internship interview experiences from seniors and things like that. So all of that keep on going just during your summer break. Like people usually prefer to do internships after their second year, but I chose not to. Instead, like I was preparing for the internship interviews that were about to come. So most of my time was spent in doing that along with the dev work. Uh, during the last few weeks, you just brush up on things. Uh, you really can't learn new things that time. So just try to uh, structure around your preparation so that you make the best out of your interviews. Great. We'll, we'll continue with some. Right. So, yeah, like most of the points Anoop said were very important. So firstly, we have like quite a lot of uh, very, very important subjects like BBMS, CN, and uh, we also had a subject called AI. Um, so those were quite important uh, and especially DBMS and CN, they are, they definitely show up in almost all the interviews. So the thing is that um, you can go two ways. Either you can uh, let the interviewer know that you, I mean, all the interviewers know that you are supposed to study these in the semester. All right. But uh, there are quite a lot of people who do a big portion of these during the summer and uh, they have a lot of knowledge already. So you might want to uh, let the interviewer know that, you know, I have already studied DBMS and CN, so you can ask me questions based on that. And then, you know, you're sort of playing like, uh, uh, you're rolling the dice sort of, because you might get asked really advanced questions, uh, which you may not have the answer to. Whereas if you play it safe, and you say that, you know, you have the minimal knowledge uh, that you have gained through the first two years, and you are yet to study the course, they may not ask you too many questions on, CN and BBMS and might direct the interview more towards BSA. So that was the main motive that I had during my interview. So I think you asked a question to Anup regarding, you know, what we did specifically for Disha. So uh, again, so the first point that I said in the uh, previous semester uh, is that, you know, you should have a lot of seniors and you should network very well. And this was very, very important. I would say without them, probably we may not have cracked the company. Uh, we had really good seniors who were guiding us uh, who had, uh, you know, who were from the same company, who had given a lot of interviews in the past. And at the same time, uh, CSI also released uh, uh, 
this uh, particular uh, activity called uh, internship diaries where we had around 20 to 30 seniors from various companies uh, note down their interview experiences and we hosted them on our website so as i was the president and i was you know very deeply involved in this i knew all of the diaries like by heart almost right because i had gone through them many times we had to proofread them so i already knew that for, for what companies you know what sort of an experience the seniors had with that and with the you know the sort of like constant communication we had with our seniors that what should we do now uh what do, would you suggest us to do uh we had a really good i would say background for the interview so i had prepared mainly dsa and i had uh i knew that you know this was a structure followed by disha in the past where they focus a lot on your resume and on, on the projects that you uh have done so I tried to learn a lot about all the domains that could be, uh, uh, you know, relevant to the projects that I have listed on my resume. So I made sure of that. And that is what I would say helped me a lot. So mainly I directed my interview towards the interview towards DSA, which ended up working out for me well. Uh, and as I said, my first project was the chess engine, which was, you know, completely based on DSA. Uh, so. Uh, you know, I was basically trying to uh, play a game with my interviewer where I would try to, you know, direct him towards the direction that I want. And that worked out well for me. Coming to the actual semester. So this can be really hectic for many people because in, uh, companies keep coming back to back. So you may have the uh, test for one company and the next day you may have the second company, but you have the first company's first round on the second day. So you have a lot of things like that, especially if it's offline, you have to you know go back to hostel, come back to the college, you have to uh, be in uniform for the interview interviewer. And you know you need to like present yourself, keep make yourself presentable after you know the long hours of interviews and then the next day you have a test so uh it can be quite a hodgepodge of things i would say and it's really important to sort of maintain your stamina and uh, also keep up hope because once you reach the final round of a company and you get rejected you may be very disappointed and you may not perform as well in the next Whereas, you know, you would have to be at the top of your game the very next day. So it's really important to maintain that stamina and that temperament. So that is something that luckily we did not have a lot of trouble with because we got into the second company. And I would say that uh, it also made the fact that it was online made it easier for us because we just had to join a meeting. We did not have to be present over there. You know, if you had three hours or four hours gap in between, you would have to be in college for three or four hours because you could be called any time. So you have that anxiety as well, building up over the three or four hours. So a lot of factors are involved basically in this whole interview process and it's quite tiring, but at the same time, uh, you know, if you maintain your temperament and you keep your fundamentals very, very clear, you can definitely crack into the first few companies. And once you have done that, the rest of the semester becomes much easier for you because you have to understand that majority of the class is still focusing on internships. So at the same, at that time, you could be focusing a lot on your academics and you could be learning a lot and still have a lot of extra time on your hands because of all the uh, internship works going on. So that is exactly what happened to me. I had a lot of time to work on my CN project. Uh, and uh, I would say the CN project is probably the second most important project throughout your degree. Uh, I personally worked on a torrent client and I qu learned quite a lot about networking from that. Uh, and I also would say that uh, my Python skills became you know, the next level because of that project. Uh, so yeah, it's quite important that you focus on these core uh, two subjects, CNN and DBMS, a lot mm -hmm. in the semester. Okay. So now we'll move on to the second semester of your third year. So that's your sixth semester. So we'll go with Anubhaya. Uh, what did you do, especially knowing that you are sorted now, you have an internship in hand. Uh, so how did you approach your semester? Right. So one of the main things for me was uh, after all the <clears throat> 10 situations and the stressful semester, that was the fifth semester, like I wanted a break and like I was, I took a good break in the winter vacations. So it was post this that we got started with our sixth semester. So sixth semester was good in a lot of ways. Uh, but again, like because of online, it got stretched a little bit more than we expected it to. Uh, major subjects that you have in this semester are operating systems. Very, very, very important. 
be it interviews, be it core CS fundamentals. And along with OS, you also have your OS project, which is again a major point of discussion in your interviews. Now, OS is basically a shift from all the things that we had done before. All the high level frameworks, development, everything just gets dropped and you come back to plain old C. And it's it's really interesting. Like uh, you can actually get to know a lot of things about computers, like how they turn on, how they copy a file, things like that. So operating systems is a very interesting course, but it is also a very demanding course, which means you'll have to put in a lot of efforts. The project was like, uh, like it took a good deal of time, but it ended up being good for me. Like I had done it with one of my teammates and we were able to collaborate and get it done. Uh, other than that, one of the important projects is software engineering. So it, this is college's way to bring you to the development firm, though it happens in the sixth semester. But uh, you basically have a stage one in the fifth semester, which basically teaches you some shell scripting and things like that. Then you move on to your uh, sixth semester where you actually have to make a full stack application. Like it could be in any domain, any topic of your choice, any tech stack. All you have to do is just, uh, you know, form a team and make it out. But uh, in addition to this, you'll learn a lot about how you can uh, document your project. So there are things like uh, client requirements, then the software requirements the uh, class diagrams that you structure your code around object oriented principles and stuff like that. So there are a lot of things which go into a software engineering project other than the code itself. So those things were picked up by doing this particular project. So in college now, this is the time where you start to choose electives. So everybody has an option to choose the subjects of their liking. So it could be different for different people. I had taken web systems to, you know, uh, strengthen my development mode. So that was one choice I made. In addition, there were also non CS electives like uh, finance. I had taken up finance. In addition, like to summarize this whole semester, I would say uh, it is the semester where you brush up your skills, uh, do a lot of real life work so that you can prepare yourself for doing the internship in the summer. So in short, you can just you know focus on particular domains, focus on improving your current skill set so that you can match the work that you're going to do in the summer. Right. So I think Anu covered most of the points. Um, OS is the most important subject, and OS project is also quite uh, like heavy and um, interesting as well. So my project was uh, creating a multi-threading library uh, where we worked in a, in groups of two, and uh, we wrote our own uh, multi-threading library in C. So that helped me learn a lot about uh, how, you know, advanced level C uh, code is written and how threads work and how schedulers work and so on. So uh, that was quite interesting. And uh, software engineering also, you know, uh, it helps you uh, learn a lot of things that would be required in your company as well, like the diagrams, for example, writing your SRS. Uh, these probably will come into play uh, during your internship project as they did for us where we had to write our own uh, uh, SRS and, you know, we had to draw our own diagrams. So uh, it's quite important to do that. Apart from that, in this semester, I focused a lot on my freelancing. I uh, like uh, worked a lot with clients across the world uh, with, uh, from various domains and that helped me gain some experience in that. And yeah, I don't think I did much from that. And I think through somewhere in probably March or April, uh, we had questions from Dishaw regarding our resume. So uh, Dishaw is one company where uh, we get allotted projects according to our past work. So they have a look at your resume and then they decide what project is good enough for you. And usually every intern is allotted one project that they you know have ownership of and they work uh, uh, solo on that project throughout the entire internship. So. Uh, again, obviously this might uh, differ from company to company and it's probably a good idea to uh, see what your company offers you and how your internship is going to be structured. And yeah, that is exactly what we do. Okay. So now I guess uh, the third year has ended and you guys are in fourth year now, currently, right? Yes. Great. So uh, we'll, not, we'll not go into the fourth year. Uh, because I guess 
many things which are required to crack an interview to to uh, be it on campus be it off campus have been covered by right even the subjects i guess you because uh, in fourth year generally have electives i guess yeah great so uh, now we'll talk about the internship experience like you guys did the internship finished it and again you are doing it for the second time right i am uh, yeah so An- anubis i am not i have decided to do the in house project uh, for my final year okay so uh, okay so uh, how is this procedure of redoing your internship because what i have heard is generally you do, do an internship may it be in your third year or your fourth year uh, and then you either get a ppo or you don't as in you sit for your campus placements in your college so how is this procedure of uh, doing the internship again so in our case like uh, once we were done with our summer internships we got our ppos in like a couple of weeks so we accepted them uh, so in coip specifically we have uh, a btech project for the final year it's divided into stage 1 and stage 2 stage 1 happens over your seventh semester and stage 2 over your eighth so in the eighth semester you have two options which you have to like uh, finalize in your seventh semester itself you could either go with the company that you are placed in to do a six months internship and then present the report of your work or you could uh, form a team in your college along with other batchmates and work on a project within the college in both cases there is a guide assigned to us from the college and then in case you are doing an internship there's a guide assigned from the company so you have to at the end of the day present your project report for the 6 months for the final evaluation okay so uh, now we'll discuss the resources in short uh, of whatever you studied because i assume that uh, it's not always the case when you study everything from the college teachers and you you tend to use youtube or some external resources to study some subjects so basically uh, we'll mm-hmm. start from the second year with the core subjects uh, which are asked in interviews so you can list down your uh, your uh, subjects and the part you studied from yeah, i'll list out the easy ones so one can go with the hard ones so the easy resources are obviously geeks for geeks uh, and hacker ranks um, and cracking the coding interview it's the book that everybody recommends and yeah, but but uh, go with the subjects as in you you uh, go to Uh, geeks for geeks for dsa and language stuff right yeah i mean uh, so in my case in particular i didn't refer to anything apart from these three uh, uh probably for you know if i if i wanted to brush up on a particular uh, uh like particular sub sub uh, topic or something i would probably refer to any random tutorial or website that that explains it nothing in particular uh the three particular resources that i uh, mentioned geeks for geeks hacker rank and cdci uh these are the main things that i referred to and yeah that was enough for me okay so you did cool. study uh, operating systems dbms oops everything from the college from uh, from cdci you get a basic understanding of what you require uh, like what cn dbms you require for your interviews so that is good enough uh, in my opinion and if you want more i mean i don't have i didn't i in myself did not uh, look at any resources in particular for that okay great so we can we can uh, probably put the links of the resources in the description sure yeah, yeah. so anup bhai Cool. I'll do a small semester breakdown, like semester four DSA. Most of the DSA stuff you can find on websites like Geeks for Geeks. There are a lot of good YouTube content on the same too. But I used all my college resources for studying DSA. But uh, you can use Hacker Rank during this time to practice competitive programming. Moving to like semester four, uh, like for the development part. this is where you can trust a lot of online sources be it youtube or udemy or udacity any any place where you can find a good course so pick up one that interests you and start doing it there are a lot of resources like don't get confused to choose the best one just pick one and get started 
uh, semester five where you have your DBMS and CN. Um, I would say like um, most of the things like the college will get done, but for DBMS specifically, there's a good YouTube channel. There's a playlist for good uh, DBMS explanations. So you could use that. There are other YouTube channels that simplify all the explanations for the topic. So if you want to refer to some specific topics, you can go there. So YouTube is a good source in your fifth semester, other than all the random web articles that you can just go through and check. Uh, sixth semester is particularly where I started reading documentation because it said that nothing beats the official documentation. So the more you try to read documentation, the better you get at using tools. So for OS and the OS project in general, I tried to read through all the man pages and get accustomed to how reading docs work. So that's one place. Other than that, for studying and OS, one thing, have... adding on to this point, this is very important for uh, your internships as well, because probably companies have lots of in-house tools where some developer has written the documentation and you don't have any reference to that uh, particular tool online because it is in-house. So you need to be accustomed to reading documentation in man pages uh, and that would really help you. So, yeah. Right. So that's one source. And then for studying your uh, OS and other stuff, you can just refer to some playlists on YouTube or go on some links on the internet. But I think like most of the things were taught in college and you really just had to go for some topics that you don't know or don't understand. That's where you look for more resources. Okay. Great. So I guess uh, we have discussed everything for which we were here. Uh, uh, I guess we have covered everything and uh, very, very thanks for being here, uh, taking out time from the very, very busy schedule. Uh, if anyone has any questions, then you can surely drop them in the uh, comment section below. And uh, we'll provide the resources link, uh, which Soam Bhaiya uh, told about and Anup Bhaiya told about. Uh, I guess uh, we can take some uh, particular YouTube channels from him and drop them in the description below. You can check them out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for having us. For having yeah. us.